On today's show, I want to predict the Falcons' week one starting lineup against the Pittsburgh Steelers. We'll go through all 11 starters on offense and all 11 starters on defense. Let's start off with the quarterback position. No surprise, Kirk Cousins, right? Uh, I'm not going to even insert a remote hot take here. Kirk Cousins, your week one starting quarterback. On the injury side of things, everything is pointing to Kirk Cousins being healthy and ready to roll for week one. So turn injuries off, and even if injuries are on, Kirk Cousins, he's not looking at any sort of delayed start because of the Achilles injury. Running back, Bijan Robinson. Um, again, no brainer here, no hot take to inserts. Bijan, your week one starting running back. Wide receivers, you've got Drake London, Darnell Mooney, and Rondale Moore. Part of me wants to put a question mark at wide receiver three and go, could be someone not on the roster? Because I'm not convinced that Rondale Moore is in a spot where he's ready to be a third wide receiver in a very heavy 11 personnel offense under Zach Robinson. But if no other additions are made, these are your top three wide receivers. They will be your week one starting wide receivers. Tight end now. I got Kyle Pitts because why wouldn't I, right? Again, like a lot of other spots on this offense, it's relatively chalk because the Falcons aren't doing major revamping offensively outside of the quarterback position. The defense has seen a little bit more of a change. Now, speaking of Kyle Pitts, over or under 1,000 yards for him. He got there his rookie season. His rookie year, by the way, was just littered with some of the best accomplishments by a rookie tight end. But can he get back there, and can he find a role and a presence in the red zone, most importantly? But I'll toss it your way, over or under 1,000 yards for Kyle Pitts in 2024. Offensive line, the exact same five as last year. Jake Matthews, Matthew Bergeron, Drew Dahlman, Chris Lindstrom, and Caleb McGarry. I see a 0% chance any of these guys losing their starting job unless an injury happens. But again, we're turning injuries off for this video. Speaking of the offensive line, I think it's a top five offensive line of football. Now, this offensive line is going to be going through a bit of an adjustment, though. Under Arthur Smith, they ran the ball a ton. Caleb McGarry is a really good run-blocking tackle. Chris Lindstrom is an excellent run-blocking guard, but most of your guards are anyway, right? You pull and you pin. But when they get to the Zach Robinson offense, they're going to be passing the ball a lot. So it's going to be an adjustment, and I wouldn't be shocked if this offensive line maybe gets off to a bit of a slow start because they're so used to going forward that now they got to start going backwards in pass protection. So just keep that in the back of your head. Let's switch over to the defensive line now. Grady Jarrett, David Onyemata, and Zach Harrison. I kind of toyed with Zach Harrison being a starter. Could be, could be James Smith-Williams. They signed him from the commanders in free agency. But ultimately, I think the third-round pick from Ohio State will join Jarrett and Onyemata on this starting defensive line. Speaking of Jarrett, just kind of the overall vibe coming out of Flowery Branch regarding his ACL recovery is a lot of green arrows pointing up. So hopefully and he should be ready to roll for week one. But there is probably a greater chance that he's not ready for week one than like Kirk Cousins is because Grady Jarrett gets in a three-point stance every play and he really needs his knees. Not that Kirk Cousins doesn't need his Achilles, but he doesn't rely on his legs as much as Grady Jarrett does to be successful. But this defensive line is one of the most crowded rooms I honestly can remember for any NFL team. I am running out of space to write people's names for this depth chart. They signed James Smith-Williams, like I mentioned, from the Commanders. He started a handful of games once Montez Sweat and Chase Young were traded last year. They drafted Brandon Dorless and Rook Aroro. They brought back Contavia Street. They drafted Zion Logue. Eddie Goldman came out of retirement just to add another body. So this is going to be a fun room to watch throughout training camp. But the three names you see on screen with the three beautiful faces, I think they're going to be your week one starters. Now, as for your linebackers, I've got Arnold Abikati, Caden Ellis, Nate Lamon, and Lorenzo Carter. Lorenzo Carter is definitely on thin ice. Maybe you see rookie Braylon Trice push him really hard for that rookie job or that starting job. But again, we're talking week one. In week one, you tend to get the nod to the veteran. And maybe if there's a lack of production, you see a change later on in the year. But maybe the most surprising name on there is Nate Landman's. I've got Nate Landman starting over 
Troy Anderson, who started last year, suffered a season-ending injury in Week 2 against the Lions. Second-round pick, huge expectations, and a really overall like optimistic coaching sense and view on Troy Anderson. But then Nate Lamon took over. I just can't wrap my head around benching a guy who had 110 tackles, two sacks, seven tackles for loss, three forced fumbles, had an interception in the Cardinals game, if I remember correctly. Maybe I'm wrong, and if I had to pick of all the starters we're looking at today, the one I'm least confident in starting, it's probably Nate Landman. But I just refuse to believe that someone that was that good last year is just going to lose their starting job because... The incumbent is a third-year guy that was a second-round pick. It's no offense to Troy Anderson. It's not like he is some perennial pro bowler in the prime of his career. You know, it's not like Brian Erlacher went down, right? Troy Anderson's in a very different stage of his career, and I think Nate Landman's going to hold on to that starting job. So there's this is one I'm definitely going to stick my neck out on, and I will probably be wrong about it, but... To me, it just makes you know too much sense to keep Nate Lambert in the starting lineup with the way he played last year. Now, if you are enjoying our Falcons content, go ahead and subscribe because we're going to have daily free videos for you all off-season long. So I know, I know a lot of other places kind of take their foot off the gas in the dog days of the off-season. We kind of do the opposite here. We just view it as an opportunity to provide content when others aren't. So go ahead and subscribe if you're looking for that type of YouTube channel. Starting corners, I got A.J. Terrell, second-year man Clark Phillips, day three pick from Utah, and then D. Alford, our friend from the CFL. These three guys all started pretty much the end of 2023, and I think they're going to start the beginning of 2024. Who's on the thinnest device? Probably Clark Phillips, right? He'll have some competition coming from Veterans like Antonio Hamilton and Mike Hughes and Kevin King. But I think Clark Phillips will hold on to the job to open up week one. And maybe we see a change early on if things aren't going well for the former Utah Ute. But I'm going to pencil in, obviously, A.J. Terrell. And then I'll go Clark Phillips opposite of him as the outside corner. And then D. Alford inside as the nickel corner when the Falcons want to run a nickel defense. Now, speaking of cornerbacks, if you had to pick one position to add to, would you do corner or would you do edge rusher? My argument for corner would be you are razor thin if something were to happen to A.J. Terrell. As for edge rusher, the pass rushing position is super important, and I can not stress enough the importance to add another pass rusher, but they have a committee at least. I'm not sold on the Falcons cornerback committee. Safeties, Jesse Bates, and then DeMarco Hellums. You can make an argument for Richie Grant over DeMarco Hellums. I'm going to go with the seventh round pick out of Alabama last year. For starters, one guy ended the year as the de facto starter. The other one saw his role greatly reduced, right? Richie Grant opened up the year as the starter. And as the season progressed, his snaps start going down. Hellums' snaps start going up. And DeMarco Hellums would have started the last four or five games if he was not injured for week 18 where Richie Grant regained his starting job for one final game. But to me, the writing's on the wall as to what direction the Falcons are going with with both of the safeties. I think DeMarco Hellams is your starting uh, starting safety opposite of Jesse Bates. So how would you grade the Falcons starting lineup? Give it A, B, C, D, or F. I'd give it a B. I think it's kind of right there in the middle of the pack with a lot of teams. Right, the, the defense has some question marks when it comes to pass rushing and corner, but offensively, you've got some real playmakers and Cousins, Bijan, London, Pitts, Darnell Mooney, great offensive line. And defensively, you've got some Pro Bowl talent at a lot of levels, right? You've got Grady Jarrett, you've got A.J. Terrell, you've got Jesse Bates. It's just some of the other parts of the roster that need some sharpening and some fine-tuning. So for that reason, I'll give the Falcons starting lineup a B. That will do it for us on this edition of Falcons today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed our content. If you did, leave us a like, hit the thumbs up button. It really does a lot to help grow the channel.